Today, Mark Brisbois is with us once again to continue sharing about spiritual metaspheres. We're standing on the precipice of a new spiritual season, and God is releasing a heavenly atmosphere to prepare the way. The promise of God that all the earth shall be filled with the glory is beginning to come to pass. Stay with us to hear how you can be ready on Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline Today. We're so glad you're a part of the program. We're going to be blessed. Amen. Our guest is Mark Brisbois. He's coming back for a second time. Talk about his book, Metaspheres. Phenomenal principle, and we're really glad to be able to share this with you. Also, yeah. last program, we offered the book for $25. That includes shipping and handling. And I just want to say this right up front so that you can call and get your order in. I really do encourage you to get this. Yeah. It's something that could really transform your life. Thank you again for being a part of this program. And also, you can call anytime during the program into the prayer center and someone is standing by to pray with you yeah. as well. Welcome to the program, Mark. Welcome, Mark. Oh, thanks. Great to have you it's back yeah. again. It's great to be here with you. Always a delight. Yeah. This has been great. We've been talking about a book, and I should maybe explain you're doing a trilogy. And I, I'm just, I haven't written one book, never mind a trilogy, you know. Uh, but, you know, you're doing this trilogy on metaspheres, and uh, you were just explaining to us earlier how the, you even came with the name. Somebody made some suggestions, and it's really quite phenomenal. But the principle is uh, really exciting because it really is, I believe, a fulfillment of the promise of God that's mentioned five times in the Bible that he will fill the earth with the presence, his glory, mm -hmm. as the waters cover the sea. And I believe it's really yeah. a reflection of that, that scripture. It, it totally is. In fact, I was looking up the scripture because I, I use this in there, you know, um, I had a guy come to my church some years ago and he, and he said, until I came and w walking with you, all my Christian experience has been sin management. Wow. Everything, I, everything we did was sin management. It was about how to diminish the amount of sin in your life. Transformation was never possible. It really wasn't in the psyche of our idea or about the gospel. But here, listen to this, Isaiah 11. And if you know Isaiah 11, you know mm -hmm. that it's a pivotal passage regarding what Jesus was going mm -hmm. to bring in terms of righteousness. But it says this, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf with the young lion and the fatling together and the little child will lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw with the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole and the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge yeah. of the Lord as the waters cover wow. the sea. Wow. He's talking about a commodity that's native to God. It is a presence. It's, it's something that exists in heaven. It permeates heaven. It creates uh, um, an inability for anything dark to exist, to coexist in that realm. Mm -hmm. And, and what he's saying is the earth is going to be filled with this. Could it be that even when we're praying, your kingdom come, your will be done, what we're actually longing for is a manifestation of the atmosphere that governs heaven, that it would come down yeah. to the earth? I mean, Revelation would have said the spirit and the bride say come. Mm -hmm. To me, these things are inextricably linked, yeah. that the whole purpose of the way we pray why we worship, that everything is calculated by God to bring what is in heaven to the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, not that we're just trying to be good until he comes and then we go to heaven. No, he's saying, listen, there's a commodity that I can pour out in measures, unspeakable measures, that will not only suppress sin, not, well, not only will they keep the gates of hell from swinging wide, they'll literally transform and make hostility not even possible. Hmm. This is the power <laughs> of the metasphere of God. Do you think, yeah. uh, I want to ask you a question because you quoted uh, Revelation 21, wasn't it, where you said the spirit and the bride say come. Do you think that that may be a time when a metasphere has fully manifested? In <laughs> Absolutely. I, I actually believe, and I've shared this at our church, that 
that what we're doing, and you see this, and I, I related to your earlier story about John Wimber. I saw, I got a quantum leap revelation about what the kingdom would do and could do through John Wimber. Because when he said, Holy Spirit, come, we went from zero to 100 in a matter of a split second. Wow. And, and that, that, that showed me that there's a dimension of the presence of God that responds to faith and maturity and understanding on a scale we never even knew was possible. What we did know is that, you know, if we can worship for an hour, you know, and really lean in, the atmosphere can start to change. What we started to realize through some of these generals of the faith that actually God has put it in you yeah. to pull heaven down to the earth, that the prayer, your kingdom come, is not just a flippant wish, yeah. a, you know, a shallow hope that God saved me from my predicament, but literally he's, he's endued us with a capacity mm. to, with faith, pull on the cords of heaven and bring the atmospheres of heaven that generates the kind of righteousness that's so organic around the throne of God. Wow. wow. So um, is this what you're unwrapping in the second and third book in this trilogy? Uh, part of it. I mean, uh, the first, I'll break it down for you. The first volume is really about the significance of atmosphere because right. I think anybody, especially in our world, mm -hmm. we, we talk about this. We talk about presence. We talk yeah. about atmosphere. When we, when we talk about a significant meeting, there may be specific events, but it often starts with the energy in the room, the presence in the room mm -hmm. was so dynamic. It was above anything we'd ever experienced. So, so God is doing this. He's bringing presence. But what we don't know is, okay, why does it come in such shallow measures in some places and such abundant measures in other places? Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's reasons for that. So the second book is, is about what, what are the reasons? How, how are we called to manifest heaven on earth. I like to think it this way. We're in a room here. It's a, you know, it's pretty chilly outside. Uh, uh, you know, not, not extremely cold, but it'd be uncomfortable as outside. But what we have in here is we have a microclimate. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have, we have a heating system that's generating a different atmosphere that's enabling us to sit here without parkas and toques on, you know, yeah. we, we don't have to <laughs> be shivering in the cold. This this microclimate enables us to exist and to thrive. You can even put houseplants in here and they won't die. You yeah. put those same ones outside, they'll be destroyed in a matter of, of you know, before a few hours are gone, yeah. that thing will be dead. Mm. Why? Because we have the mechanisms that create a different climate in here than we do out there. What God has given us is the ability to access a different climate. So heaven has, is filled with the atmosphere, the knowledge of the glory wow. of the Lord. God issues forth. He, he, he releases his presence. He shines forth a glory that is unapproachable light that penetrates anything darkness and eradicates it. So that presence is able to do that. But how do we get it from heaven to the earth? Well, Jacob has his experience in Genesis 28. He has a dream and he sees angels ascending and descending. In other words, there's a there's a, a, an opening, there's a conduit between one world and another world. Yeah. And so when he gets up in the morning, he gets, he has the promise of God. He, he, he get, hears the voice of the Lord, the yeah. presence of the Lord, the angels coming. And he's, he's how awesome is this place? Yeah. This is none other than the gate of heaven and the house of God. Yeah. You see the place where that different air comes in here, we call them vents, but it really is a delivery system for an atmosphere that comes into this room. And you can go to the thresholds where that warm air is. In fact, if you're cold, you go stand over a vent, yeah. Yeah. right? Because that's where it's really nice. If you're cold, you get in the heat, you know, yeah. you're in the stream of it. Well, what Jacob saw and intuitively declared is that the house of God is the place where there's a threshold that where heaven meets earth. And that is a gate. That is an access point between two worlds. Well, the church, to me, that's the first mention of the church. The mm -hmm. church is meant to be a place where that atmosphere of heaven is introduced into the earth. And so the second book is about this. It's, it's saying that, that there is a battle for gates. The gates of hell and the gates of heaven are yeah. warring against each other. Mm -hmm. And Satan's servants and the unsaved and all those who walk according to the prince of the power of the air, they don't realize it. 
but they're actually cooperating with an opening of a gate of hell. And we see these atrocious moments yeah. when they open wide. Yeah. You know, there's murder, there's mayhem, there's yeah. destruction. You know, many, many openings are, are riots and, you know, murders and, you know, high crime sprees in certain parts of cities. Uh, but, it, but the idea is the enemy is always trying to open a gate, but so is, so is the Father. Yeah. And the God has provided the church to be the gate of heaven. Mm -hmm. But what if we don't know that? What if, what if we can't open the gate? What if we don't even know we could open the gate? You know, we're down here singing songs, hoping, you know, to be a better Christian next week. But that's not the <laughs> measure of what we are. We're actually called to release a presence. In fact, Matthew 16, one of my favorite passages, yeah. and you all know it well. Yeah. But And stop me if I'm going too long. But no, 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 it's fine. But when Matthew, uh, Jesus is testing the, the, the disciples, right? He, he always has a purpose when he asks them a question. Yeah. He's yeah. not looking for information. Yeah. But he had said to them earlier, John chapter 6, I think, or 7, he says, the words I speak to you are spirit and life. So if the words I speak are spirit and life, really what I want you guys to be doing is yeah. the same thing. Yeah. So when he's asking the question, he's not looking for information. He's looking with the kind of response that they bring. Where are they drawing the response from? Are they releasing life and spirit? So... Uh, Peter says you are the son of God, you know, that you are the Christ, uh, you know, uh, the son of the living God. And he says, blessed are you, uh, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And on this, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hmm. So what is he saying? He's saying this is the juxtaposition of the spiritual warfare in the earth, it is about the servants of the Most High opening a gate and the, and the servants of darkness opening a gate. The one who swings open their gate the widest wins. So we have Elijah on Mount Carmel. Yeah. He says, you guys go ahead, call on your God, try to swing open your gate. Yeah. Yeah. But I already know yeah. I've, I've locked it down. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've locked it down. You're not going to be able to do anything, but you go ahead, give it a shot. Yeah. And of course, Elijah's there on the mountain. And he does his offering. He cries out to God. Fire comes down. Yeah. And of course, there's a shift in the nation. How is that shift precipitated? It was through the opening of one, one gate and the closing of one mm. gate. Now, we'd underestimate the Baal prophets because we don't really see the backdrop. But, but he, they're given a challenge. Can you manifest the power of your God before everybody to see. If they'd never done it before, they wouldn't have agreed to that challenge. Yeah. But they had done it before. Yeah. yeah. Just like the sorcerers in Egypt. They mm -hmm. had turned sticks into serpents. They yeah. had done sure. miracles. Yeah. They had they had seen manifestations of darkness <laughs> that'll make your skin crawl. Hmm. But they didn't realize what they were up against. The yeah. Baal prophets did not realize what they are up against. The church of today ha will in and the church of the future will exceed in manifestation, uh, the, the, the unveiling of the glory of God in the earth. This is God's plan. Yeah. So he, doesn't, he wants people that are not just good, not just believe in Jesus, believe in the Bible, but when they worship, when they say your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, yeah. the, the gate swings wide and the atmosphere of heaven rush in. And those that don't even know God will say, how awesome is this place? Yes, right. One, one thought comes to me when you were sharing about Matthew 16 and the revelation that Jesus said when Peter said you were the son of God, you know, and then he's at the place where they considered it the portal of hell, actually, the right. uh, the location <laughs> that where he was, and you can go visit it today. And we've been there when we've visited Israel multiple times. But uh, what I thought was ironic is in the same narrative, Jesus rebukes Satan or Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. You do not savor the things of God. And <laughs> I was just thinking about what you were saying is that the uh, portal and the, and the metasphere was opening and Jesus was commenting and they were the next minute, next minute. He said something contrary and he had to be rebuked. And he said, yeah, he rebuked Satan. And yeah. he, I mean, it's shocking really when you look at the language of that and that's, that really leads us to the third book because the third book is what is God doing in you as an individual believer? Okay. If, if atmosphere is what he's bringing into the earth, 
Mm. And if, if the clash of the kingdoms about who can generate their atmosphere more than the others, what does he need to do in you so that you become an atmosphere generator? And so the first mm. step is kind of what happened with Peter there. What happened with Peter is he gets a revelation from heaven and he's like excited, you know. Now everything I say and think is God, you know. He's yeah, a, yeah. Right? So the next day he, he presumes to correct Jesus on something, yeah. you know, rather critical, him going to the cross. Yeah. yeah. But, but Jesus does not say that's a bad idea. He doesn't say, you know, you're a little misguided. I understand you're emotionally knit to me and you don't want to see me die. Yeah. He doesn't say any of those things. He right. said, no. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. he, said, he said, listen, Peter, Satan has leveraged your ambition and your personal agendas yeah. right now to open a gate. This wow. is not just words opposing me. I discern that the very voice of Lucifer is behind this. So the point being, we as believers can be the gate of heaven, or yeah. alternately, in any given moment, the gate of hell. Well, it's interesting you say wow. that, because as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, okay, how often have I empowered yeah. the gate of hell? Oh, my. How, I wonder how often have I empowered the gate of heaven? Well, I know there are times when I have, because I speak in prophetically mm -hmm. or under inspiration, under anointing of the Holy Spirit, but I just it left me wondering, okay, where have I empowered and I'm sure if I'm speaking words of unforgiveness or bitterness or criticism or negativity or anxiety. Yeah. Well, James calls it the overflow of wickedness. Yeah. You know, and, he, and he's talking to believers in chapter one. And he's saying, listen, you're murmuring. There's offenses against one another. There's division. Division. And he said, he said your tongue is a fire set yeah. on the course of fire of hell. Yeah. And, and he's saying, and in, wow. and in verse chapter one, he talks about an overflow of wickedness. I, I shared a message in Guatemala just a few weeks ago where I and the, titled it two steps forward or one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. Because the frustration in our lives is we're alternately used one moment, you know, as a, yeah. as a, a, a ambassador of goodwill, prophesying, declaring the, but the next moment in our frustration, we say something that opens another gate. And what the Lord is saying is, listen, you, you guys have the power. You have the power. As believers, you have even more authority to open gates than do the Satanists and do the occultists and the New Agers and anybody else. So you have to be careful. And, and uh, I want to give you authority to open gates. But if I'm not sure which one you're going to open, I'm pulling on the reins of that authority to limit you because I can't trust you to not open the wrong gate right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. So there's this deep dealing that God is doing in the church right now to make sure that we're, we're empowered to open gates, but at the right gate. Yeah, Isn't that interesting? Because we've said over the last little while that what God is doing in the church is really, he's dealing with individuals' hearts, but also there's a sifting taking place and, you know, uh, an adjustment in the body of Christ taking place so that God's people will move together as one and, and have the same heart and the same mind and believe that they can do the same thing together right. through worship. And, and we can literally, we could spend hours talking about the, that work and yeah. it is profound and it's deep and it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I want to go back for a second to, to the gate of hell. You know, a, a lot of believers out, out there feel like somehow the enemy has free reign. Mm -hmm. He actually doesn't have free reign. If it, you know, it talks in, I think, Thessalonians about the one who resists. Yeah. When he's removed out of the way, then the man of sin will be revealed. Yeah. Yeah. The, the actual, the presence of gate openers of the gate of heaven in the earth is what is keeping the gates of hell from opening. Uh, you know, the enemy can't do what he wants. In fact, I mean, we're the primary obstacles in the earth in the same way Elijah was for the Baal prophets yeah. at Mount Carmel. Us, our intercession, our prayer, and our worship. And the enemy's trying very hard in this season to try to demoralize intercessors and believers from believing or understanding that they're effective, trying to get yes, them to quit, trying true. to get them to pull back. Mm -hmm becoming disillusioned about the condition of their, you know, the, our politics, our, our nation, yeah. our cities, our churches. But God is saying, you know, just keep pressing in because mm -hmm. I'm doing a work right now. There's never been more intercession, I believe, in Canada right now in the history of this nation than I believe there is that. right now. Mm. Yeah. And I believe it's 
taking us toward a point where we're going to see those gates Scripture swing that comes to open. mind, too, is when Jesus spoke to us and he said the kingdom of God does not come by observation. observation. Yeah. Of course, he was addressing a <laughs> mindset that said that there should be a king like King David restored and the nation of Israel should be restored as a kingdom. Mm -hmm. But he said it doesn't come with observation, the kingdom of heaven yeah. is in you. Yeah, and right. really, uh, I'm sure all the people around him were going head tilt right about that point. Like, what, what are you saying? You know, They wouldn't have an, a clue what he was talking about. That would be the most confusing statement ever. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But you mentioned that, as we were talking earlier in the green room, that William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army, says, I'm not waiting for a move of God. I am a move of God. Sounds presumptuous, but he knew his gift. Yeah. And he knew what God had given to him. And yeah. he was able to release it wherever he went. And he understood that. We're going to come back and talk to Mark. Talk a little more about how you can get that book. We talked about it earlier in the program. And uh, just finish up a little bit about Metaspheres. Help change the spiritual climate of Canada by becoming a monthly partner with Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan. All donors will receive this year's Lifeline Today fridge magnet, a reminder that you stand together with Dick and Joan for Canada. Pledge your support for $25 a month and receive Joan's book, Five Hours in Heaven. In this book, she recounts her visitation to heaven where she experienced a transforming atmosphere of God's love. A must read for those who have loved ones in heaven. Partner at $50 a month and also receive this authentic anointing oil from Israel along with prayer cloths, powerful spiritual aids when releasing your faith for healing and miracles. Lifeline Today has also commissioned this beautiful flag as a testament to our faith in God for the nation of Canada. Suitable as a home or garden flag, it can also be used as a wall hanging or prayer shawl as you pray for Canada. It's our thank you gift to you for your faith-filled partnership of $100 a month. Your tax-deductible donation will empower this ministry to release the prophetic voice of God across our nation. Call today and say yes to becoming a partner with Dick and Joan. God is calling each of us to go to a higher level of intimacy with Him. Are you tired of the same old? Are you ready to go to a higher level? Do you want to become the man or woman of godly character that God has called you to be? If you're ready to go to a higher level, God is ready to help you. Isaiah 48 verse 17 says, This is what the Lord says, Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is good for you and leads you along the paths you should follow. If you're ready to make a change in your life by going into a higher level of intimacy with God, we here at the Lifeline Today Prayer Center would love to pray with you and agree with you that your desire to do so would be accomplished. The number is on the screen, or you can email us at prayercenter at dickandjoan.com. Well, you were just listening to Kim Clausen. She's our prayer center coordinator, along with <laughs> another lady named Penny, and they're doing an amazing job. Yeah. We just had a program some weeks ago, uh, just releasing Jill, who's still with us in the ministry, just doing different things. But yeah. uh, really, it's a blessing to see God yeah. provide and move people in the right position when he needs to. You know, actually, yeah. when we first heard about this transition, it said, what are we going to do? <laughs> but God always has a plan. And you know what? He has a plan for you. Amen. You know he what? Does. We just have to understand the kingdom of heaven is greater than anything on this earth. Mm -hmm. And God has and a plan for you. And I really believe that God is moving a lot of people into place for this next season. Don't you think oh, that? Absolutely. And that's why it's so important to be embracing God's discipline in this season because mm -hmm. it's it's not God's not angry he just wants to use you more yeah and I know he wants to move you up exactly right? yeah <laughs> to a higher level precisely yeah. what would you yeah. say to those at home just to apply what you said in these last few minutes well I I would say this you know uh, I've been very fortunate in so many ways but as a young Christian I discovered that there was a fountain inside of me and that oh. fountain has only grown in, in, in intensity since I was a young Christian. And I talk about that in my school of the spirit, but, but I've discovered that there's enough volume. The river of life that proceeds from the throne of God mm -hmm. is behind the fountain that God has put inside of you. And what he wants you to do is to be releasing that and discovering the power of atmosphere that comes out of it. I tell a story a couple of occasions, but I was in a foreign nation and I was driving down the road and I felt the warfare so intensely. Yeah. I began to pray in tongues 
And about 20 minutes in, I felt the atmosphere break as the, the car filled mm. with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. As soon as that moment happened, the two guys that were with me in the back seat started praying in tongues who had been entirely silent to that point. Yeah, the point something. is, you have the capacity, you already have a gate inside of you that can be enlarged to begin to affect the geography around you, yeah. whether it's in a car, in a bedroom, in an mm -hmm. office, just walking down the road. Wow. Charles Finney had an aperture that was so great that entire towns, just by him going through on, the, on, a, on a train, would feel the presence of God. People would begin to repent yes. and call out to God. It's true. That's the potential. That's true. Oh, yeah. my goodness. So, you know, <laughs> well, here's another anomaly about the kingdom of God. Those who are weak will be strong. It's interesting that the whole kingdom is inverted. The kingdom of God, I mean, is that the weak are strong and uh, the le lowest and the meek will be elevated. And so no matter who you are, I say these things so that you understand no matter who you are, mm -hmm. you can be like Mark said, a gate. A gate of blessing, a gate of the river of God. Lord, I pray for many today who yes, maybe Lord. feel for some reason or another they're not effective. Mm. Maybe they feel like they're victimized. Maybe they feel like they're going through difficult times and God, you've turned your back on them. But that's not the case. They mm. are your children. We declare the river of God over their lives. We declare that they are the gate of heaven. We declare, yes, Lord, amen. that they experience your atmosphere because it's rightfully theirs as children of God. And if you've never given your heart to the Lord, that's how you open the gate and that's how you begin to experience the presence of God. Yeah. In fact, all of us will say that the moment we opened our hearts to the Lord, there was mm -hmm. this flood of yes, the atmosphere yes. of heaven into our soul. And someone said, how do you know you're saved? Oh, I know I'm saved. You know, know you just that knew, I know right? That I know. Thank you, Mark, for sharing with us. <laughs> Great. Uh, My reminder pleasure. of the book. The book is available, Metaspheres. We send it out to you. To, Includes shipping, $25 shipping and handling. It'll come to you. Really do encourage you to get this. And it's yeah. part of a trilogy. So there's more coming, right? You can also get it on Amazon. On Amazon, yeah. Well. Amazon, Absolutely. amen. You can go there too. Yeah. Or you can get it here. There's yeah. <laughs> just one. So we love hearing from you as well, of course. Yeah. God bless you. So we just really release you and thank you for the your partnership, your support of this program. Yeah. Thank you, Mark, for sharing today. Thank you, today. Mark. It's always really rich when Thanks. we have you. Mark is a regular, as you probably have already <laughs> noticed, and there's a good reason for that. You see the prophetic teaching that comes from his gift, and so thank you again yeah, for that. Thank you. God bless you. Thank God you for you. being a part of the program. You know what? We're going to stand together, and together in agreement, we shall see Canada, Canada saved. saved. Amen. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for partnering with us. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments about the program. To watch past episodes, learn about the ministry, or contact us, visit our website at dickandjoan.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan and on our YouTube channel, Dick and Joan TV.